is the stupid does. Kids gotta show you the shoe shuffle. think it's fine. Hey, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how I transformed this 1998 snapper mower from what you saw into what you see now. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right, I, guys, I picked up a little uh, snapper mower. It's just a little nine ho horsepower mower. Um, I got it for a good price. It runs good and it's working for our, our, our yard. However, um, I had a tire that is not holding air whatsoever. And we're gonna do a little restoration on it and get this thing fixed up. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe and stay tuned. All right, today we're gonna to be putting on new tires, new blade, a new clutch, new belt, and new dust oil boot, or oil dust boots on the gear. I'm gonna show you guys how to flip the mower up and what to do uh, to prevent leaks and so on, and we're gonna get going. Um, I went with a much, much heavier tread tire, so more of a tractor tire. Um, these rims were 16.5, times six minus eight so those will replace the rear tires on the mower um, I did not need a new blade clutch and belt right now however the, I'll show you when I get down there the clutch is starting to get worn and the belt is starting to get worn uh, the old oil boots were almost non-existent on there so let's get this thing flipped up and I'll show you what to do all right, let's get this mower turned up first. So on your gas cap, there's an air valve on mine anyway. You gotta close your air valve, make sure your uh, gas cap is secure. I go ahead and turn my fuel line off. Pretty simple little mower, but I tell you what, this thing mows our hills amazing. I didn't have any issues with it. And with the stuff that I'm gonna do to it, It'll make it even better. So, with these, they uh, they've got back back supports, so you can just stand these up. Look at all that dirt. But we're gonna get everything lubed, cleaned, and functional. To remove the blade, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. What I do is I simply put a clamp onto the deck. And that's going to hold the blade where it's not going to move around. Put it down here. Because it should break free pretty easy today, but that will hold the blade from turning. You can put a uh, block of wood or whatever to do that. It's a three quarter inch uh, nut here. And a three quarter inch wrench back here. I use a little more of the odd shape one. Fits in there a little better. But just get that in place. said I broke this free the other day because I did take the blade off to sharpen it. It was pretty hard to break free initially. Um, I had to use some WD-40 and I tapped it loose. Don't lose your washer. So the washer nut and bolt right there and one more right here. And 
set your nut, your washer, and your bolt aside. We're going to need that. Put the new one on. So, old blade will just pop off. If you can see, it's pretty dinged up. Um, it was a lot worse than this before I sharpened it the other day. And then I went ahead and mowed everything. Because um, we have a lot of hills, bumps, and sticks, and stuff like that. So, I wanted to use the old one before I put the new one on. Alright, so it's just going to snap in place like that. And put our bolts back in. Pretty simple blade chain on these things. The hardest part is getting it to break free initially if it hasn't been off in a while. Now if you needed to, uh, you can let this swing down to hit here. I don't need to put that much on it. So, just get it tight, secure. Alright, blade replaced. Let's move on to the next thing. Alright, next we're going to be replacing this clutch wheel. Um, you see, it's got pretty worn, there's some cracking in it, you know, so I'm coming up on the end of the season. I could get by with this one if I wanted to. However, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. It's not that expensive and they do wear. This wheel engages and I'll show you, you know, how to change it, but it, when you gear shift, it engages into the drive wheel up here and that's what's going to turn your wheels and so on. You see when you turn the wheels, the clutch drives, and then it's going to push the mower itself. So uh, this is a five speed with a reverse. Uh, currently it's in neutral, so it's not hitting the disc. And I'll show you uh, what to do to get it loose. It's pretty simple. Mine just has three uh, nuts and bolts right here that we're going to take out and pop the new wheel on. Alright, so to get this going, if you want to, it makes it a little easier. Engage your parking brake. Engage your parking brake and you can shift it into fifth. And that's gonna move that's gonna move it over and give you more work room. However, when you put the new wheel on, it's probably gonna hit um, the drive wheel. So to put this back on, I think it's easier to shift it back to neutral because then it's got this wider area here. Here, this is pretty simple. Um, I already loosened mine. It's just a minor seven sixteenths. You know, yours may be a little different, but I already loosened mine and put them hand hand tight just to make it a little quicker. Now, see, personally. I find it easier to do this over in, well, it'll turn. It's going to be more difficult to turn with it engaged in gear, plus the parking brake on. Yeah, I don't like that way. I'm going to shift it back to neutral. I'll take my parking brake off, because now I'm going to have free spin on the wheel. So these little nuts and bolts are tricky to hold on to. But you just pop those out. Your old clutch wheel comes off and now we're going to put the new one on. So let's do like this kind of show you the difference honestly there's still a lot of wear on this one however because it's cracking really badly and that's most likely just from it sitting over time getting dry rotted the mower hasn't been run much so 
I went ahead and did it. I think this piece was like $14. But this is also going to give it more power. Um, you know, Tim Taylor. Oh, 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 more power, right? To uh, drive. So it just means it's going to be even better going up the hills and so on. But I was army mechanic, so we learned how to rig things. Make it work. Clutch wheel replaced. I'm going to go ahead and take my wheels off because we got to do the tires. And you saw this tire is just, this tire is shredded up. It ended up leaking on the side here and has a full split right here. So there was no way it was going to work. It just got dry rotted from time. And while we've got the wheels off, that's going to make it easier to get to this spindle so that we can replace the oil boots here. So once we remove these old ones, we're going to clean up the shaft really well. Uh, I'll grease it, and then we'll put the new oil boots on, and that's going to keep dust and everything out of the gears. All right, guys, so off camera, I replaced the belt. Uh, I forgot to record that, so at some point I'll do it again, and I'll record it then. And I did the boots already. Now, I didn't record the boots because I didn't exactly know what I was getting into, but while I have the wheels off, I'll explain to you what I did, okay? Um, so, to, to do these boots, you have to take this wheel off, and this would be the driver's side wheel. And so, to take the, just the wheel off itself, you have these three bolts, okay, which we're getting ready to put the wheels back on. Um, now, if you didn't need to change the tires, instead you could remove the entire hub with the wheel on it. And to do that, there is this bolt right here with a nut. Now, I had to beat this out of there because I don't think it's ever been taken out. And this is a 1998 machine. So now, this will actually move for removal in the future. So I'll just have to grip it with like a vice grip and then a 7 16 inch wrench or a socket on that side. So I had to um, basically tap this hub off because I didn't have a puller. Now there's a slot here. So what I did is I put a tool in and there was an extra hole in this hub. Um, like a pilot hole. So I put it into that and tapped it out so that it didn't mess up any of my threads or the plate itself. After that, there's a, uh, a clamp here and a dust boot. So you remove that. Uh, then you have to remove this whole panel. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven screws um, or bolts. The, most of the bolts are mounted into the frame or into a piece. And then this one has a nut and this is a nut. But you remove all those, then you slide uh, this piece off. Behind it, there's going to be um, a wa like washers and a, a thresh washer. So those are all locked into the hub. And after that, um, I had to remove my chain case. So I, I loosened the chain case. I took the bottom bolt for the brake and I ended up loosening up this piece down here because this is where your chain casing fits into. Uh, there may be another way to do that. However, 
that's the way I ended up doing it. Um, I left this piece in there, but I loosened the, the two sides right here, and that freed it up to where I could get the entire chain case out and then get to this other side. And I think there is another way to go from the other side and pull the whole shaft out. I'm not sure about that. Um, I watched, if you go check out Jim Jackson on YouTube, he's got a really lot of good videos for snappers. So he helped me out a lot. Um, I still have to, I've lubed most of what I did. So once I got all this out of there, um, I removed all the, the remnant of the old boots. I cleaned up the entire shaft and then I greased it really well. Put the new boots on, clamped this side in place, and you can shift it while you're doing it to make it easier. Then put everything back in reverse. Now, if I ever have to do these again, I'll video them for you so you can see how I did it. Um, but like I said, go check out Jim Jackson's channel. He's got a lot of stuff as well. Uh, so then I just put everything back, lubed it all up, and tapped every, everything back in as I went and greased as I went. Um, now, so uh, that's everything. That's boots, belt, blade, um, and fly the friction wheel. So, let's put the wheels back on. And these were all three quarter inch just lugs. So you can use a, I got a three quarter inch deep well that I'm using, or you could use a tire iron, or whatever you got. <laughs> oh, last thing, on a tire tread like this, these are directional. So this should be going forward, like basically like arrows moving forward. So that's, this one will be for that side. Thankfully I grabbed the right one. And, let's see, I got to do the plugs, I got to finish my oil, or my lubing, and I need to change the oil because the oil is really dark in this, plus a bunch of it's been spilling out the back. I did find where it was spilling from, so the paper towel didn't do anything, it's actually coming from the oil uh, check gasket down at the bottom, and I think that's just because... Um, it's tipped upside down. So, all right, those are pretty snug. We'll tighten them more when we get it on the ground. Get the other side real quick. And this project for now is completed. Oh, and I did order new front tires as well because I took those off to grease them and saw how actually dry rotted they are. And it's only a matter of a little bit of time and those are gonna bust as well. So I went ahead and ordered two new ones. And I'll get those put on whenever they come in. I think they'll be here in a few days. But, there we go. It's gonna run like a new mower. All right. Let's add our degreaser into our water. And then we'll get this thing soaking. This isn't a big mower, so I'm going to wet it down pretty thoroughly with the degreaser and then let it sit. And I'm going to also, um, well, probably should do that first. Lift up the bottom. May have to do them separately. We'll see how it, how it goes. I'm going to soak this down and then we'll lift it up, spray the bottom, and then soak this down again. Now the main reason I'm doing this is because I'm fixing so much stuff. Uh, what I want to do is be able to keep up with it and that way 
Uh, if I have, I can identify leaks if I have leaks and get those repaired quickly um, with with the mower in the condition and it's in right now. I can't really do that because it's so dirty. And I did wipe down some stuff already, uh, just a little tight trip. Excuse me, tip. But you can use like tire shine for the black plastics and stuff on the mower, and that brings them back to life pretty good. Usually, what I do is I just uh, spray it on there, let it sit for a minute, and then wipe it off real good. So we just want to saturate everything thoroughly and that's going to help get a lot of this dirt, grime, and grease off of there, especially in the engine areas around the battery. Make sure all your fittings are tight. I still want to uh, think I'm going to get some high temp paint and paint this muffler because it's pretty, we'll see if I can get it off okay without wrecking anything, but it's pretty, uh, not rust, yeah, it's worn, it could use some, it could use some paint, but I, I'm going to have to clean it up, probably sand it first with some like 220 or something like that or some 80 grit I don't want to wreck the muffler I just want to take all the surface rust off and to do that you can spray WD-40 on it and sand it and that's going to remove the majority of the surface rust if you didn't know and then after that uh, like I said I'm probably going to use some high temp, high temp engine paint and paint that uh, I've seen some different people doing it on YouTube and they had pretty good success with like car exhausts and stuff like that so the main purpose of it is just to keep it from rusting um, I don't expect it to stay pretty over time I mean this is a lawnmower guys so this is kind of you know something that I would do well initially because I just got this thing so I want to get it cleaned up and fixed up and then what I would do is probably end of the season every year you know clean it up real good um, you could do intermediate cleanings uh, you know a lot of lawnmowers have a, a port where you can hook up a hose and clean stuff like that but this has just been like I said uh, it's been used and it's sat for quite a while so I want to get it cleaned up just to be able to identify any future problems or if I'm missing something currently that I'm just not seeing because especially the underside is really really coated with grease but and I may paint the deck um, don't have to use high temp paint for that you could use a ceramic or something like that if you wanted to prevent grass sticking to it uh, the main reason I would do it is just to again if there's any surface rust or stuff like that, um, I want to protect it. You know, this is a 1998 machine, so I want to make sure that it's uh, serviceable, you know, if God allows. We, I don't ever just make plans and expect to be able to do it. It's always if God allows it, so that's part of the vitals of my channel. I, uh, I always thank my Father in Heaven for my lessons and my blessings. Either way, both ways. But yeah, this undercarriage is pretty, pretty nasty. And I had already cleaned up a bunch of stuff. I've got new plugs coming in right here, and um, there's one on the dip, on the chain case as well. So I'm going to uh, replace those and then I'll grease those at that point. That's why I'm not running my mower right now. Like I pushed it out here. Uh, I'm not running it at the moment. Plus half my oil's drained out the back. So I got to change the oil and lube it still. And then it's going to be ready to run.
So, I want to show you what I was doing. I took the muffler off and uh, sprayed the whole thing down with WD-40. And you can see here I haven't done anything yet. And this is starting to dry, so we'll hit it just a little bit more. But the WD-40 is also a protectant. So I'm using it in order to get all the surface rust off. And as you see, there's a lot. But I'm just using some 220 grit. And what we're going to do, finish sanding this up. You see, I mean, it's really easy. You're not wrecking the structure of the muffler or anything like that. You're just simply removing surface rust and grime with the WD-40. And we're going to clean it up with some degreaser and wash it off. And then after that, I'm going to get some high temp paint, like engine paint uh, or muffler paint. Alright, so we're just going to hit it with some degreaser. Because it's pretty nasty. And since I'm going to paint... Whoa. And we just want to clean it up good because the WD 40s oil, oil and paint won't mix too well. So that's why I'm doing this now. And we'll clean it up, let it dry. And then it's ready for paint. Um, the mower's almost dry, so we can go ahead and get the bottom of the deck painted. I'm probably going to paint it black. It looks like it used to be red. I didn't know that till we cleaned it. Yeah, so. you can see that there. Yeah. It's cool, Daddy. It is cool, huh? Is that all chocolate and the cake? Trying to teach the kids a little something they don't know about today. It's so, you know. Yeah, I see your hands like... Enjoy time with your kids while you've got it, guys. I'm, thankfully, I'm retired from my work I used to do. Yeah. So I've been able to spend a lot of time with my children and teach them different things. I found a green rye. Do me a favor, man. Hit. Yeah. Come hey. spray my hands off <clears throat> so I don't get it all to the hose. Yeah, just, that's fine. Not so much. There we go. All right, one more time. Okay. Wow, look at that. See oh. how much better it looks? Yeah, Already? I see black. I see black. <laughs> yeah, it used to be black when it was new. Yeah, cool. So we're going to turn it black again. Here's some of the old paint. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to clean this up. You know, the mower's come a long way, and it's just, I don't know, fun little projects. Helps me teach these guys some stuff, teach you guys some stuff, and honestly, it's a little fun for me here and there. I don't like to do everything myself, but I've always been kind of a, I don't know, I just like to learn things and do things. A lot of time I'll just pay someone to do it if it's out of my realm of stuff but some Here's things I like again. to do yep the sun's gonna help us we like the sun get a little Thank vitamin D uh, I think it's right blue hey baby you're in the way <laughs> here come over here come over here you're gonna help here dry it off get it good where it's wet all right I see Abigail is drying. <laughs> Woo! Is she shaking? I saw. Yeah. Oh, I see that shaking. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that they're, you know, the WD-40 is <laughs> off of there, and that it's cleaned up good. If there's something we got to hit again, oh, we'll no. hit it again. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I said, like I said, sure. honestly, watch. this muffler is in pretty good shape for how old it is. I'm assuming it's the original muffler. And that mower has a 98 Briggs and Stratton on it, which is an awesome motor. 
So we're just trying to do our part to make it last a little longer. And hopefully. Yeah, I uh, know what we mean. Well, it's going to look a lot better until we start mowing again. It's going to get nasty and dirty, but that's just part of the part of the monster. All right. I think we're good. We're going to let this air dry the rest of the way, and I got to go pick up some paint anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You need to Say high temp engine paint. That was close enough. Wait, Good we, job. You missed one, miss one in one spot. Where? You show me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. See? Gotta have your inspectors. So, this one was inspe inspected by Briley, number nine. <laughs> yeah, but you need to spray more than. No, I don't think we do. We got it pretty good. That's That's what we were looking for. Now we can paint it, and it's gonna look like. Almost a new muffler. All right, so let's get the bottom side of this painted up real quick. And it'll take a couple coats. I'm just using a Rust-Oleum Farm. This is a gloss black. I'm just doing this again to protect the underside of the deck and that'll allow much more time out of it. And most importantly, you know, this is a rust preventative, so. Shake up your pan good. I'd already done that. And we're gonna go ahead and get a light tack coat going and then give it a few minutes to tack up and set up and then we'll spray a little heavier second coat. We'll make it match the next new blade we got. Plus I gotta air it out here in clean coats because this stuff stinks. Wear a mask. All right, got a bunch of stuff touched up, cleaned up, blades back on, the grass shields back on, and I got my new caps put in. Um, <clears throat> I am going to get gear oil still and finish lubing the differential and the chain case, but new caps are in and I've got a couple extra in case those get broken. So, but looks much better. I'm trying to get one of those, but it's going to take probably a few weeks to get in. So I just cleaned it up for now, and we may replace that at some point. But as you see, uh, much better so far. Now I'm going to wipe down all the black stuff, uh, all the plastics with wheel cleaner. And I still have to get my front tires put on. They're supposed to be here today, but they haven't come in yet. So. I'll get those put on and we'll wrap this boy up. All right, let's get going. I'm using a Rust-Oleum high heat. It's supposed to be good up to temperatures of 1200 degrees. So we'll see how it does. Worst case, it's gonna smoke.
Oh yeah, don't forget when you're done. Hold your can upside down, clear it out, and it will last and be good for next time. Alright, new spark plug. Nothing crazy. Uh, three quarter inch deep well. And had a CJ8 in it. So they're different. It says this. This one said it replaced. Uh, replaces. Ooh, this might. Oh, yeah. There we go. CJ8. And this is a Briggs and Stratton. So hopefully it's correct. All right, yeah, it fit in. I didn't have a deep well for this one because it was different size. Uh, I think it was a, well, I think 11 16 deep well. I just didn't have one. I didn't feel like going to grab one. Put it in. Um, let's crank it up and see how it does. No muffler on, so it should be should be nice and quiet. Yeah! I guess we need to get the muffler back on. Alright, let's put the muffler back on so it sounds right again. Um, there's just the two mounting bolts that go into the block and then one for the brace. The brace is a 3 8 and these are half inch I believe. Yes. So just slide it in and get one started and try to get the other one started. I'm just going hand tight right now to get everything lined up here. And the brace, uh, the brace bolt is a three eighths. All right, let's fire it up again with the muffler this time. Muffler looks brand new. All right, much better. Now All right, we're gonna go ahead and lube the chain case and the differential, make sure they're topped off. It calls for double O grease. So I picked this up at Tractor Supply and just pump it in there until it comes i pulled the plug out of the chain case i still got to pull this one but you just put it in there until it starts coming out i don't know how much was in there there we go all right so Let's move this, show you the differential. All right, so now on this one, it calls to fill at the top. You remove both, fill at the top until it starts coming out of the bottom. I'm not sure why exactly, but 
I'm going to do it like they say to you because there must be some reason for it. I just don't know what it, is, what it would be because once this mower is set down, it's going to be the same height either way. The only thing I can figure is that, you know, it ensures that it's hitting stuff when you fill it. I, I mean, I don't really know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It is easier to fill up here, so maybe that's why. But if you know why, maybe drop a comment and tell me. Because I, I don't understand why you would fill this one and not just fill this one. But we'll do it like they say. Whoever they are. So you just fill in this top one until it starts coming out of the bottom. <laughs> that's a good thing I'm doing this. They were low. Oh, I do see. If you feel in there, there's a gear right behind it. So maybe that's why. I don't know. You tell me. I'm pro-ish. I'm not professional. I know it's low. There we go. Please stop. You gotta put your line in, sweetheart. I know 80, 90 would be easier to fill with. This stuff's pretty thick, but it's it's still got, you see, I mean, it's got a good consistency. <laughs> yeah, definitely good I got this today. There's grease in there, but definitely not enough. You know, if you don't maintain your equipment, that's a good way for it to seize up. And don't be cheap. You know, put in what it calls for. Which this at Tractor Supply was not very expensive. Um, it's for farm equipment. There we go. It's starting to come out the bottom now, see? I was wondering. It was really low. So, that's it. Wipe off your caps reinstall them and the whole reason why we cleaned up the motor was so you know if we have leaks or anything from now on I'm gonna be able to see them easily all right so I got the front wheels replaced and put on as well as lubed and I went ahead and filled up the oil so it's ready to go it did take a full 48 ounces and I used uh, Briggs and Stratton SA well yeah SAE 30 so this is it this guy's ready to roll um, let me go test it out everything's looking good all right so let's test this thing out um, this is our probably our steepest hill it, I measured it one day and it was like a, about an 18 degree slope so pretty steep but on these, if you keep them in first gear going down the hill, it'll stay at that speed. And then you could do whatever gear for coming up the hill. Usually I'll go to three or four for up. So let's give this a try. See how it does. Stupid is as stupid does. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Thanks for watching.